good way to start the day. Anyways. This guy's gonna let me in. See, I'm gonna use my signal and ask nicely to get into this lane. Thank you very much. You get the thank you, Flash Roos. There you go. Anyways, hey, what was I saying? Good morning. We're in Calgary. We're leaving Calgary. We're going to Saskatoon. So our load was ready really early this morning, actually. Like, really early. They told me it would be ready after lunch. Nuh-uh. Continue 4.8 kilometers, then take exit 258 on right to Highway 1. Right. It was ready first thing in the morning. So we didn't even get to go check out the dog park. It's kind of disappointed. But it's off on our left here. This is the dog park, I believe. It's all fenced in, 62 hectares. Would have been really cool to be able to go there and let the dogs run around. We did run around where we were. It's just, I wanted to actually go check out the dog park. So we're just going down into the valley here. I believe this is where Drumheller, Alberta is. Uh, it might be known as the land of dinosaurs. A long time ago, before I was born, dinosaurs used to roam these exact lands right here. They actually got a big giant T-Rex statue in town. Yeah, this is Drumheller, yeah. And it's very scenic going down here, and it's interesting because we're on the prairies, right? It's very windy here right now. You can probably hear the wind just howling around the truck. It should get better as we go down here. But uh, we're on the flat prairies, right? And then all of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere, is this enormous valley and the town of Drumheller. This is where the dinosaurs used to roam. At least it's a bunch of them. Here in Hannah, 
Alberta. I'm gonna turn around and take another look at that truck. Yeah, and that snow that you see there, yes, it's snowing here in April. On my birthday! Snowing on my birthday. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. This thing is huge. I would not want to get stuck behind that on the highway. Look at that thing. Ginormous. Why build a new building? Just move it. Yikes. Saskatchewan. We've just crossed into the mighty, mighty, mighty province of Saskatchewan. We're about two and a half or two and three quarter hours from Saskatoon. That's where we will make our stand tonight. Or that's where we're going to rest our head. Whatever, however you want to look at it. I gotta unload there at 6 a.m. sharp tomorrow. Before the birds even start singing. So that should be interesting. I don't even know if the sun is up at that time. I don't even know what the world is like at that time. I've never been up that early. I'm just kidding. I used to I used to have to get up for work that early all the time. When I worked locally, my shift started at 6 in the morning. That was five years of brutalness. I hated that. Not a morning person. Doesn't matter how early I go to bed. I don't want to get up before the sun. I hate that. I'll do it if I have to, but... I will whine and complain. <laughs> ah, no, it's not good to whine. But you know what I mean. So we are on Highway 9. We came through Alberta. Uh, now we're... I believe this turns into Highway 7 soon, or something, Highway 14, I don't know. But this highway, this it's a two-lane highway all the way till Saskatoon. Like I was telling you before, there's no proper four-lane highways between Saskatoon and Calgary. You just sort of gotta meander your way through the countryside. I guess we don't need one yet. I wouldn't mind having one. I wouldn't argue it. Let's all wave at this driver. Everybody wave. Everybody wave. He didn't wave back. He shut us all down. What a guy. We are here. We have arrived. And there's the building right over there. Now where's the Wi-Fi antenna? I should be in like direct sight of it. I think it's that. I don't know. It's usually like a, a white bar that it looks like, but... Anyways, Diesel. You ready to go outside? All right, guys, let's go. Come on. Da, 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 da. Oh, where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? Can't leave a man behind. Hey, guys. Sarge. Sergeant, come here. Diesel. Come here, bud. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. You too, Diesel. Sitting here all nice like a bun. Like a couple of good brothers. Good boy. Now go give her. Give her. Play. I know you want to. Get him. Get him. <laughs> Come on, Diesel. Your leash doesn't go that far. <laughs> Sergeant just will not leave him alone. Relentless. Typical little brother. That was probably me with my sisters growing up. Never leave him alone. It's always bugging him. <laughs> Get him, Sergeant. <laughs> Is he tired now? You tired? You better be tired. You're gonna sleep? Yeah, you're always quiet all night. You know, you're a really good boy, actually. You're really quiet. I really lucked out with both of you. You're a quiet one too. I mean, they both can bark, but they bark when it's appropriate to bark, you know? They bark when they're supposed to bark. There's a little odd time here and there where, you know, they get a little bit annoying if they see someone that they really want to meet, which is everybody. And they get a little bit of... I really want to meet them. That's the sound you make when you really want to meet somebody. When you see them in the parking lot. 
Nice ears, by the way. I know I talk about it in like every single vlog, but I must admit, I am impressed. Why is there a plate on the bed over there? Making supper? Good boy! Uh, so what was I saying? Yeah, they uh, I got lucky a lot of dogs are little yep, 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 I hate that. I don't mind it if it's someone else's dog really unless if they're like At night time uh, I like it to be quiet at night But I mean it's 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 different when it's someone else's dog and they're all being you know a little bit disobedient You know sort of getting all excited when they meet you and stuff But when it's my dog I I want to train my dogs to be respectful and respectable around people that they don't know right? That's why this summer we're going to try our best to socialize them as much as possible with anyone and everyone. And every time we meet someone new, I'm not going to actually let them go and say hi to them until they calm down. I'm going to try that. If that actually happens. And if that doesn't happen, well, I guess they just get to see and meet everybody from a distance. And I'm just going to ask that they don't pet them until they settle down. Because they should not be rewarded for that behavior. They should only be rewarded for a calm, mature behavior. Composed, confident, but not jumping all over them and bowling them over and licking them like constantly. And oh, it just drives me nuts. Diesel's still not very good at meeting new people. Oh, he will lick every piece of bare skin that you give to him. If you have bare feet, he'll lick your feet. He'll clean them right up for you. Oh yeah, he's a he's a foot cleaner. And your like hands, he'll lick your hands. It just bugs me. That's not how I want my dog to meet people. That's not how I want you to be either, bud. I want my dogs be calm around new people to quietly go up and sit beside them and ask to be pet not go and bowl them over and demand to be pet because you guys as, as, as much as you guys don't believe it not everyone on this earth has been born just to pet you I don't believe it man everybody loves me I'm the decent weasel man that is true they all love you but they would really like to pet you, and it's hard to pet you when you're bouncing off the walls. I know you don't really see it in the truck, you don't notice that, because when they're around me, they know how to act, because I've trained them the way I want them to be. When they're around new people, suddenly, psh, the rules don't apply anymore! Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. That's right. Respect the alpha male. He's like, who's that? I don't know who that is. Is that you, man? That's me. Me. I'm the alpha. I'm the one who feeds everybody. Respect your elders. I'm older than both of you. Anyways. So like I said, we've driven all the way to Saskatoon. The roads actually weren't that bad coming out here. I thought they'd be a lot worse. But uh, we only ran into one slowpoke, grain hauler. Can I ask you a question? Can I get right in your face and ask you a question? Grain haulers? At least the grain haulers in Saskatchewan? Why do you drive so slow? Just wondering. And I'm just wondering, is it necessary to start slowing down for your turn five miles before the actual turn? I'm just wondering. Or... Just wondering. <laughs> the only slow people I ever meet up with on two lane road in Saskatchewan are grain haulers. So I'm not trying to uh, discriminate or anything. I'm just saying facts. I'm like, why, why the hell drive so slow? <laughs> and they all only use the interview. Oh, whatever. It's not that big a deal. No, not that big a deal. I just thought it was funny mentioning it. So <sighs> I'm going to go in here and have a shower because I stink. I'll say that out loud. Loud and proud. Diesel, is there someone there? Do your job, man. Who is that? Oh, good boy. Good boy. It's just your brother, man. He <laughs> scared him, Sergeant. <laughs> good boy. Good boy. You show him who's boss. Show him who's boss, man. Apparently, Diesel's the boss. These Cascadias are so popular. That's the Freightliner Cascadia. That's the kind of truck I was looking at when I went to go look at trucks. $165,000 for that unit right there. Plus that's probably about a four to $5,000 bumper on there. And my neighbor's leaving. Bye neighbors. That's sad. I was kind of hoping they would stay so that I knew who my neighbors were. I liked them. They backed in here without hitting me. Oh well. Back to what we were talking about. 
Yes, that truck right there, brand new, 165,000 Canadian dollars right now with the exchange rate. It's about 140,000 American. So in Canada, that truck right there, brand new, $3,100 per month just for the payment. On top of that, about every month to two months, you want to do a $300 service on it. And there's insurance if you pay your own insurance. Uh, sometimes the companies cover that. And uh, maintenance, regular fixing up and whatnot. So just for the truck, without any maintenance, just to have the truck with your name on it, $36,000 a year. I told you this in past vlogs, right? So that's the cost of these trucks. Now, it is possible to make those payments as a truck driver, but you've got to run your butt off. Vacation? What's that? You don't take vacations when you got that kind of payment. Because you can go on vacation all you want, sure. It's not like the bank is going to say, oh yeah, sure, you can skip a month's payment, no problem. Go to Europe, go to Hawaii, have fun. You don't have to worry about this month's payment. <laughs> if you know of a bank like that, let me know. And that's where we're going to wrap up the day, guys. So it was kind of a shorter day today again, but uh, like I, I explained this, this, it was an important load I have to get here. And I have to unload it tomorrow at 6 a.m. sharp before the birds wake up. So that should be fun. I'm going to go to bed right away, go to bed early after I take my shower and edit this up. i got about 12 hours before I have to be there still, so i got some time. But the question of the day for today, guys, is would you, whether you are a truck driver or not, if you ever were, hypothetically, or realistically, would you ever buy a brand new semi truck? Let me know down below in the comment section there. And don't forget to check out the description on the YouTube page. And don't forget to find me on YouTube and subscribe so you don't miss a single day. I'll see you tomorrow.